So the M1 chip brings a ton of new updates to the Mac ecosystem, all of which I'm covering in my M1 review coming soon to the channel. So if you haven't subscribed, remember to do that so that you can see it when it comes out. So M1, there's a bunch of jargon and a bunch of spec updates, but for the average consumer, one of the biggest things that you're gonna notice is the ability to run iPhone and iPad apps on your Mac. Today, we're taking a look at some of the most popular iOS and iPadOS apps that you can run on M1. But before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button to see more from me. Hit that like button because it tells YouTube that this video doesn't suck. Thanks for supporting the channel, you guys. Now let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, does the M1 chip run all iPad and all iPhone apps? No. Apple revealed that developers have the option of opting out of this option if they want to. And many developers did just that, including, well, YouTube, for instance. As well, we've got the big names like Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, Snapchat, and a ton more. Hopefully what that means is they're working on a more proper version of a Mac OS app. So they're limiting it from the App Store until that's ready. And that's really not to say that you want every single app on the App Store available on your Mac. After all, your computer's meant to get the full desktop experience, where iOS apps may only have a few of the core features and it's purposely limited to take advantage of a smaller screen. Still, with some apps, it's nice to have that option. So let's take a look at some of them. So all iOS apps are gonna live in the Mac App Store and they aren't immediately noticeable. The best way to find your apps is either by searching and then toggling at the top for iPhone and iPad apps or going to your purchase list and selecting iPhone and iPad. After you find an app, you're gonna install it just like you would any other Mac app. Now let's take a look at a few of these popular apps. So we're starting with Eufy and that's a security app for all of your smart home monitoring, whether it's your doorbell or your HomeKit enabled cameras. They didn't previously have a Mac app, but obviously now having the iPad or iOS version on Mac allows you to use it through there. Diving into Eufy, you can see it opens relatively quickly. It immediately prompts notifications and takes on an iPad-like format. Logging in here, we see Touch ID is functional in these apps. We've also got a universal navigation at the bottom of the app, which you're gonna see in most of these apps. It's gonna provide a very uniform way to navigate through every app that you're in, so get used to seeing that bar at the bottom. So with Eufy, all functions work as expected. No real issues here, and it's definitely nice to have that Eufy app on macOS. Next, we've got Apollo. So if you're a Reddit fan, you probably already know what this is. I don't need to explain it to you. It really is just an alternative to the Reddit app. So launching Apollo, again, you can see that universal navigation at the bottom showing post, inbox, account, search, and settings. You can see it's super responsive and pulls in a lot of gradients and semi-transparent menus to fit with Big Sur. Full screen just maximizes the app and spreads things out, but keeps significant margins which make it look a bit awkward and don't use the available space well. Of course, that's because it's a direct port from the iPad OS version. The idea is that over time, developers will let their app adapt better to the system it's on. Next, we've got the game Pocket City. Just like on iOS, the game forces specific orientations from portrait to landscape and doesn't let you resize or full screen. I've noticed some serious frame rate drops when using on Mac OS. Even just looking at the car movement, it's very jumpy, doesn't have smooth transitions. So this one definitely has some bugs that need to be worked out when porting an official version to Mac OS. Next, we've got Flip, which shows you digital flyers. This one's the most responsive app I've used so far. You can see that it works well to resize all items as you move the frame around. Transitions are smooth no matter what you're doing. And it works well in full screen. Now lastly, we've got AliExpress. And it's the first one I've used where it's noticeably using an iOS version of an app instead of an iPadOS version. And it doesn't let you resize either. You can see that trying to snap to a side of the screen just moves it over, but doesn't resize to fill the screen. 
everything is relatively small on screen, but that's not to say it doesn't work. If you wanted to use this experience instead of AliExpress website, you could definitely do that. So the navigation on these apps is fairly responsive, fairly intuitive, but for those apps that need the additional touch or swipe, Apple's built in some touch accommodations. The ways that you can simulate these actions include space to tap the center of the screen, arrow keys to swipe across the screen, scroll to drag, and hold option for multi-touch simulation. I've noticed over time with my testing on all of these apps that just because it shows up on the App Store doesn't mean that it necessarily works with macOS. In some cases, you'll be able to download it, but then opening the app, you'll get an error like this message that I got from Manulife Bank. So this new feature of iOS apps on Mac was Apple's way of slowly getting developers to create a universal version of their app that works across the entire Apple ecosystem. Now clearly it's in its early phases and you're not gonna get a lot of use out of all of these apps. However, I'm excited to see what this means for the future of apps. But what about you? What apps do you wanna see brought to Mac from iPad or iOS? Let me know that down below in the comments. As always, remember to hit that like button because it tells YouTube this video doesn't suck. Hit subscribe to see more from me. Thanks for supporting the channel and for watching you guys. I'll see you in the next one.